Okay, let's talk about GMAT mathematics. So we're going to take a look at this practice problem here, but if you're watching this video, I assume you are uh, studying for the GMAT or maybe its cousin, which is the GRE. But uh, just like SATs or ACTs um, to get into college, into an undergraduate program, uh, for graduate school, as you well know, you have to take either uh, the GRE, the GMAT, you know, there are programs where you don't have to take uh, uh, one of these, but these are the most popular. Of course, the GRE uh, is really intended for like a lot of different type of graduate programs where the GMAT is mostly uh, intended for business school, like for maybe like your MBA, but just like your SATs and ACTs, you know, entrance exams count, you know, for sure. They, they, there's a lot of weight to them. So, and again, you know, you're, you're, you're studying uh, to do the best you can as anyone would. So hopefully this video is going to help you out. But this is just a quick practice problem. A little bit about me. I am a uh, middle and high school math teacher, even top beyond uh, that. So I've been doing this a long, long time. Um, I also have a specific GMAT math prep course. I'm going to leave the link in the description of this video if you want to check that out. But this type of uh, problem here, you should be able to solve, uh, be able to handle something like this. Uh, for the GMAT. So the GMAT, if you take a look at the type of math that's on there, you really, you know, it's not really un, unlike a lot of the math, let's say, for the SAT or ACT. Um, you know, a lot of high school, more advanced high school level math, that's a good level. You know, you're not going to be having to be doing like advanced calculus and things like that because a lot of you are going to business school. Maybe you didn't even take calculus as an undergrad, okay? So you really want to build up your kind of high school level math skills. Now, I think sometimes people think, oh, it's high school. It's like not that, you know, difficult. Listen, I have a, a degree in math and a master's degree and high school level math. There's a lot there, <laughs> especially the more advanced courses, algebra two, pre-calculus and beyond. There's a lot of stuff there. And the further you get away from it, the more you're going to have to go back and review. So don't, you know, have this false sense of security uh, if you did well in math and in, in high school or even in college. But if you've been away from it for a long time, you know, you have to put the review in and, and, and uh, you know, it'll serve you well. But let's get to this particular problem here. Um, of course, I'm going to solve this, uh, but I'm going to give you an opportunity to see if you can solve it. You might want to pause the video and see if you can, um, you know, figure it out. If not, we'll kind of jump into the problem. Okay, so this is what we call a radical equation. So we've got to figure out how we're going to do this. Well, I have all this stuff right here underneath this radical, this square root. Well, it would be nice if we could simplify it, okay? And we can. So the first step you should have seen is that, oh, I can simplify this by factoring. So x squared minus 9, let's kind of write this, uh, write this this way, is the same thing as x plus 3 times x minus 3, okay? And now I can write this all over this x plus 3, and that's going to be equal to 1. So that's, you know, it's going to really help me out. Now, why is this going to help me out? Well, because now I can cross cancel. I can cancel these like factors. Okay, these x plus 3 is x plus 3. And this leaves me with a nice simple radical equation, which is simply just the square root of x minus 3 is equal to 1. Okay, so at this point, if this kind of confused you, and you're like, well, I didn't know how to handle this. How about this particular problem? Can you solve this problem here? Okay, so maybe you want to pause the video and give that a, a quick whirl. But let's get into this. In order to solve a basic radical um, equation, something like let's let's take a look at a simpler problem. Let's say the square root of x is equal to uh, four. Now let's think about this for a second. The square root of x. Remember, x is some number, some variable. The square root of some number is equal to four. So if I just ask you that, you know, walking down the street, I say, "Hey, you," <laughs> and you, I said, "What's this? The square root of what number is equal to four? Of course, you'd look at me like I'm a crazy person, but you would say, "Square root of what number is equal to four? Yeah, that's sixteen, and you would be correct, right? Well, how did he, how did we figure that out? That number is sixteen. Well, we have to get rid of this square root. So to get rid of a square root, we just square it. Okay, but in mathematics and algebra, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you got to do uh, to the other side. So if I square a square root, I'm just left with x. So 4 squared, of course, is 16. So that's the strategy we're going to use here. So we're going to go ahead and square both sides of this equation here. And I'm left with x minus 3. Whatever is under, 
whatever is underneath the square root is going to be uh, what's left is equal to 1 squared, which of course is 1. And when I solve this, I get x is equal to 4. Okay. Now, at this point, we're like, all right, we're done. Well, not quite. On anytime you're dealing with a radical equation, you need to get, and I want to go off on a tangent because this is where you really need more instruction, and I'm not going to get into it too deep, but I do need to tell you that anytime you get a solution for a radical equation, this could, could be what we call an extraneous uh, solution. In other words, it could be an extra solution, and it may not be applicable for this particular equation. In other words, it may not be the actual solution. So in, uh, in order to check, we need to go back and plug it in and make sure it actually works in the original equation. So let's do that real quick. Okay, and then there's examples where you can solve this and get a number and plug it in and it won't work. So that's why you have to check these. So, uh, so x is going to be equal to 4, right? So we're going to have 4 squared minus 9 over 4, right? Plus 3, is this all going to be equal to 1? So, of course, 4 squared minus 9, let's write that over here, is going to be 16 minus 9 over 4 plus 3 is 7. Is that equal to 1? So 16 minus 9, of course, is 7. So we have 7 over 7. Is that equal to 1? 7 divided by 7 is 1. What's the square root of 1? Is the square root of 1 1? Yes, it is. Okay, so because that's true, this, in fact, is uh, the solution. So that's basically it. You need to be able to handle a lot of different type of equations on a GMAT, okay? Especially when you work in a lot of various type of formulas. And there's a lot in algebra. There's systems of equations. There's quadratic equations. There's radical equations. There's rational equations. There's logarithmic equations and on and on and on. So equations are a huge part of math and the way you solve one type it can be completely different than solving other types. So um, hopefully you know the idea behind this video is just to kind of sample maybe kind of sample your current math skills but just because you got this right if you did get this right you know you don't want to have a false sense of security either Be like oh I'm good for the GMAT you know um, lots to cover plus you have a lot of geometry as well but again I'm gonna wrap this up um, if you think you like my teaching style you want to check out my full GMAT course uh, GMAT math prep course again I'll leave the link in the description of this video I've been on YouTube for many, many years. I have literally hundreds of videos um, that can help you out, prepare for the GMAT. So hopefully you'll consider subscribing. If you like this video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave us a feedback. Um, did you have an option to take the GRE versus the GMAT or you, you know, like do you have to take the GMAT? Um, maybe there's another type of test. Uh, so any kind of feedback would be great. I definitely wish you all the best in graduate school. I know that's a big commitment, you know, as someone who's, who's been there, done that, um, you know, you're likely going to be spending a lot of money, but again, you know, it is, uh, another level of education that, um, you know, I, it, you just can't lose with getting more education. Okay. So hopefully you get into a great program, great business school, if that's where you're going, I wish you all the best. Thanks for watching and have a great day.